Welcome to Stuff TV, we started a player, Morgan Schneiderland, yes! Don't know why I said it like that, <laughs> but, uh, but I don't know, I just got overcome with excitement. I think because he just looks so cool in his France top, I mean, because people wearing French tops generally just look really cool. Generally. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's this, this is not general. The camera, you like this, not the camera. The camera's the camera is yeah. <laughs> camera's <laughs> actually only on me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a done deal. We've been waiting uh, about Six fourteen years. months for this to happen. Mm -hmm. Well done for that, boys. But um, yeah, it's a it's a for me big signing that had to happen. It was his number one. Hopefully this will uh, calm Ronald down before the steam blows out of his ears and and we can get on with um, trying to sound stupid, but trying to improve the rest of the team now it's very very important because like you said he was the number one target for this window and i think the more you let that you we allow that to drag on it mm. kind of knocks mm. everything that you're trying to do you're trying to put a perception out of we're trying to improve yeah. things and everything are trying to get better and you're arsing about over a transfer <laughs> but he's a big one because he's it's the area where we need we've looked to try yeah. and place you know gareth yeah. barry's been an amazing signing for us but it's quite clearly slowing down very very quickly and we've needed someone in that engine room he's a good age 27 yeah. you know him and Garner you just think them two together you know Tom Davis learning off them those two together the interceptions that he he's yeah. still the top interceptor tackler since 2013 interceptor tackler yeah the yeah. two combined yeah. and them two dovetail man yeah. in the midfield <laughs> should it's it on paper yeah. it sounds like a match made in heaven yeah and I think what he does as well is he's if you're looking at those two as a, as a partnership he's the one who's going to get on the ball a bit more and carry it forward yeah. and I think you, you've seen that when he was at his best at Southampton when he was with Wanyama mm -hmm. Wanyama was the player who just sat broke up the play yeah. and then he gave it to this fella and he ping passes off to the flanks so you carry the ball forward you get on the edge of the box and take shots and when he was at Southampton mm -hmm. under Pochettino under Koeman he was probably the best central midfield player in the Premier League yeah. like that's that's not going over the top in any sense at all I think there were times when Fabregas was doing well in, in that period as well and other players but in terms of consistency mm -hmm. and, and doing it every single week he was absolutely outstanding Schneiderlin um, like I said they're top of the stats in interceptions tackles great in the air as well can, can ping a pass he's, he's got Absolutely everything, and I, I'm just surprised it's not really worked out for him at Manchester United. It's so exciting, no, there, Matt. His career path's really weird, isn't it? Yeah. Because mm. Str Strasbourg B, 37 appearances, five goals. Strasbourg first team, five appearances in two seasons. 2008, mm. Southampton by him, makes 230 appearances, playing 14 games. I think he bought him 14 goals. Yeah, sorry, yeah. He, I think he scored. I think they got him for like 1.5 million. This is when they were in the championship. Mm -hmm. And then he's gone to Manchester United. He's made 32 appearances uh, with one goal and against us. Against us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's like a. He's played for France under 16s, under 17s, under 18s, under 19s, under 20, under 21, and uh, and for the main team. Mm -hmm. He didn't play that many games for any of them. So he's played 15 times for the France team. Um, but it's 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 a it's weak. Don't really don't remember him being at Southampton that long. You know no, what I mean? He was there for he was there part of the teams in the, in the lower league. He was there for seven him, years, yeah. and then he just suddenly came into the Premier League when he went got into only it. young when he went to Southampton. But he's only twenty seven. He's only twenty seven now. He's only twenty seven so now. So strange being at United not, for not twenty eight till till the end of the year. Six foot one. So he ticks every box. He's been in England for a very long time. Mm. You know, ten years now. Mm. So I suppose as well, get them at the perfect age, perfect stage of his career for things to kick on. He's still only twenty-seven. So France, I'm sure he still wants to be big part of that yeah. as they go into the uh, into the World Cup in for, in Russia next year. So it's ideal, isn't it? Ideal time to be bringing him in. I think. I think, like Matt just said, there he he was that Manchester United went and bought him mm. for a big fee. You know, I know, I know them fees have now become bog standard, yeah. like, but. He paid a lot of money for him at the time, couple, you know, last year. And he's, he, I thought he'd done well for United last year. He wasn't as probably as good as he'd have wanted to be, but they weren't where they, they were struggling yeah. a little bit, or they just didn't have any style about them. They were, he was mixing and matching Van Hal. And you know, for us to be able to get him, I think it's a fantastic sign. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think he was ever really the right fit for the way Van Gaal mm. wanted to play. He was all yeah. about slow build, mm. up wasn't he possession? And obviously Mourinho has gone out in the summer and bought Pog, but he's immediately going to be the man he's going to build oh, the midfield course. around, isn't he? So he, he's been pushed down the pecking order a little bit, but I think if you look at 
Pochettino Southampton team and Koeman Southampton team two sides that played high energy pressing physical football mm. he was at the core of both of them and arguably it, the most important player in, in both yeah, of those sides I was just going to say it, it, that that came out didn't it we really emerged under yeah. Pochettino and, and with Koeman mm. Koeman you know obviously Koeman's it's almost been since day one that we've been room, mm. rumoured yeah. with him with, we, you know it all for, sort of fell into place and um He's a victim for me of, of Louis Van Gaal and, and the the things that happened at Man United yeah. while he was there. Never really, never really having a settled team, never really having a settled midfield, and almost like the first thing you do is go as a certainly for Man United last summer. Mourinho had to bring in big names, Pogba being one of them, yeah, the walking av- av- mm. Adidas advertisements, and he's been a victim of that. Whereas if if everything was calm and steady, and he probably would have been all right, but he needed that big shiny player. And Pogba was obviously the one they went and got, and he, he's been a victim of that, which hopefully yeah. will be to our benefit. I think the other thing about him as well is he's, I think he captained Southampton quite a lot when he was there as well. So you're looking at him and thinking he's hopefully, you know, we, we talked about on the final word in the last year about how there's not enough yeah. voices in the middle of the team and in key areas. I think he's somebody who, who's shown it at Southampton that he was willing to. to to lead the team in a vocal sense, but also in the way that he played the game, he'd, you know, he'd be happy to take the ball in tight positions. As I said before, carry it forward through phases of the pitch. So he leads by example, and he's, he's quite a vocal player in the he's, middle of the park. And the other well. thing is, he fits Cummins' e type, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Of, of tall and athletic. Yeah. And I think if you looked at a midfield, you've got him, you've got Garner, you've got Tom Davies, mm. you know, Mo Bezic hopefully back mm. in a couple of months. You've got Ross Barkley there. You can, and then Gareth Barry as a, as a sub mm. or whatever. You kind of moving that the yeah. team on again. Then you know your Tom Cleverley's maybe going out and people like this. You're moving the transition mm. in that team, and that sense of midfield is so important. And yeah. if you can yeah, pick, in the modern game, you yeah. know, if you can pick those athletic players, I've he's got those to choose from. Koeman, that changes the face of our team again, doesn't it? You yeah. know, obviously Bezard's we don't know if he's going to play again this season. You know, he's training and all that. But it helped, I think it helps Ross out having someone who's yeah. experienced and a, such a good footballer in there. It's, it's the right kind yeah. of sign, and that's I think, what I think. As well as, I think people forget as well, when he went to Manchester United, he was so sought after. Yeah. You had, mm-hmm. you had Arsenal, Arsenal yeah. after him as yeah. well. It was a big statement for Man United to get him. So it's not that he's become any worse of a player, it's just that. This is the move. Yeah. I think that's the I, way it is. I can't remember a signing which was greeted with like such a unanimous happiness from our supporters. Mm. Probably since we signed Rolly the yeah, Garku in terms of Garku, how yeah. pleased everybody was because you know we've just you know usually when we do these these sort of shows we say <laughs> this is a bit of a concern. This is a bit of a concern. Mm. And why you can say he's, he's not featured at United in the main you're looking at it thinking this this really should work. Everything's in place for the signing to work in terms of the, the players' personality, the way you'll get on with the manager, and what you'll bring to the Everton team as well. Mm. He's somebody who does tick every box about wanting to get a little bit too far ahead but of it's, ourselves. But it's the Premier League experience yeah. is key for me, the yeah. fact that he's played yeah. in the league. And it's, it's no, there's no, shouldn't be any settling in period. He knows the manager. Mm. He doesn't have to move. He doesn't have to move anywhere. He'll come straight into a into a, into a a big game. And, and apart from maybe his match fitness, which I'm sure will be fine because yeah. most players these days are all ready to go anyway. So... Uh, there's no real issues with it. It's mm. what we need. It's what we need now, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a it's a it's a big one, and we're on to the next one now. Hopefully, that's what yeah. it, it's just. It's just glad it's done and dusted. Yeah. It's just, yeah. You know, we move on, don't we, from it? Yeah. But no, it's a really good sign. Yeah, let us know your thoughts on Morgan Schneiderlin and the signing, and what you think he'll bring to Everton Football Club. You're happy with it? If you're not happy with it, then. I'll be why? genuinely, just let us I'll know. Be genuinely interested no, no. to know if anyone has Just let us know. Just let us know why. Why yeah. you know? Let us know why. Um and all those things in the comments. Thanks for watching Toffee TV. We'll see you later.